looking to review headline stories as published by the newspapers this morning. Uh, joining us to also expand the coverage is an economist and a public affairs analyst, Mr. Defolarin Olamileko. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Now, without further ado, we'll, we'll pick up our first set of papers. And it's a quartet of papers, all of which focus on the federal government's initiatives in terms of rescuing the current food security situation. Yesterday on the show, we did discuss President Bola Metinibu's uh, advanced plans to stabilize the economy with the ejection of over 2 trillion naira in the next six months. And particularly, it's 500 billion naira earmarked for the Agri and Food Security Initiative. Now, this morning, leading that discussion of four newspapers, the first two of which we'd see are the Daily Independent and the Nigerian Tribune on both of whom have the lead stories concerning a 150-day window for free importation with a removal of import duty on food commodities. Now, let's pick the papers up together as we look at this development. On the Daily Independent, you'd find the lead story beneath the masthead. FG rolls out measures to crush high food prices, suspends taxes on importation of food commodities, to import 250,000 metric tons of wheat, 250,000 metric tons of maize. Now, similarly, on the frontline burner is the lead story on the Nigerian Tribune. FG Malls, 150-day duty-free import window for food commodities. Now, strap lines beneath this lead story read, set to import, 500,000 metric tons of maize with others to tackle inflation may suspend duties, tariff, taxes for importation through land sea borders, says Nasima. Hails federal government's decision. Details in public space not yet formalized, says the presidency. Now, it's also important to point out that on the Daily Independent and Nigeria Tribune, the riders are similar, talking about the developments in river states, which we'll discuss much later on the show. But before we look at the other two papers that have a similarity in this lead focus, <clears throat> let's get your thoughts, particularly following the rider on the Nigerian Tribune. Hmm. How very does half a million <laughs> metric tons of maize and wheat tackle inflation? Very interesting and very laudable from the government, but we have to go memorially. This is not the first time the federal government of Nigeria will be engaging in food importation, although not them particularly importing the food. It will have to be cleared, and uh, it's not the government that is importing food. The government is giving opportunity for food importers to take advantage and import food. And this is not the first time we'll be having this kind of uh, activities being engaged, particularly allowing uh, uh, import duties or export uh, import duties, particularly and tariff, to be excluded from the importation of this set of food. 150 days, quite laudable. But the government need to learn from the past and previous government. When they initiate this kind of policy, how did they fare? And seriously, from all empirical analysis, from all empirical results they have had, it has never, never reduced food prices. From 1999 to date, even till when the last admission also did similar things by allowing food importers to bring in food, by allowing them to have access to even government facilities to ensure they bring these numbers of food. Did they ever reduce price of food? Let's take, for example, wheat that are being used to produce flour. It never reduced the price of bread. Is it maize that is being used by poultry farmers to produce feed for chickens from the rest of them? It never. So we have to be very, very careful with this kind of policy. Although in the other aspect of the writers of newspaper say it has not been officially formalized meaning that government is still looking at this policy and they have to listen to us and listen to someone like we saying that in the past we have done this before we have given importers opportunity to import as much as they can import reduce tax on them even give them free holiday on tax and importation but it never never reduced the price of food in the market so the question now is what has been the reason why hasn't this work worked and what can the federal government do to make sure that this works this time? First and foremost, do we really need to import food into the country? That's the question we need to ask ourselves. It means that the government have not been doing it rightly in the way it's supposed to do. Do we need to import wheat? Do we need to import maize? 
We have all these things and we have available land and semi available land that would have helped us to grow. The challenge is that over the years, government shy away from real food production itself. Meaning that government is supposed to take advantage and be the first runner of being the first farmer, not giving opportunity for others in a way that they now ask, okay, surrender the food production to individuals and groups to be producing. They, will, they are shy of, they will take advantage of it. By the time these food are imported into the country, this guy will give ex excuses why the price must remain high and never come down. So why will government allow such to happen? So for more indication, just like you are asked, what should the government do? For me, the government is supposed to be the first farmer. That means the first set of people to be producing the food, not allowing people to be importing the food. And secondly, government have left the responsibility of ensuring that food production is taken as a proactive number one national security policy. What does that mean? You are not asking people to go and import food. Not you yourself importing food. What does that mean? They can just import anything and share, uh, and we bring it to the Nigerian market and begin to sell it. And as I earlier pointed out, the price will not crash because there are other indicator factors that this guy will give as an excuse. Just two, in the last two, three days, we have been seeing the price of PMS going up. These are the excuses this guy will give. After we import it, we have to transport it. They will tell you they have challenge with storage. There's energy to keep the food fresh. Then they will tell you other conditionality that affect cost of production of turning wheat to flour, then from flour to bread. They will tell you why corn or maize that are being imported cannot be grinded because there is no enough machinery to grind it or there is no power. Then they will talk, talk about logistic challenge. They will talk about insecurity, why they cannot transport their food from here to there. They will not talk about the corruption on the highway where a security personnel are collecting bribe or collecting and money from extorting mm. transporters and the rest of it. So they will give all necessary excuses that I don't know if the price of food will remain up unless the government takes the initiative. For me, it is the government that's supposed to be doing all these things, not giving opportunity for a, a third party that will not be given. When the moment they said, then taxes will be free. There's no tariff on the importation. It means that government is not going to import it. They are going to give it to third party to import, which also means that the third party will take advantage. Just like we are having challenging with this PMS issue now, that people that have been given opportunity to import are not trying as much as to dictate the price when the price go globally have not changed. In the US, for instance, the price of gas, which is the PMS, have not changed for the last three years. $1.3 or $1.1, depending on the location. But here in Nigeria, within one year, price of PMS have changed more than six times. Now, you're, you're saying that the government should be the one taking, uh, spared in this initiative. Exactly. And um, not giving it to the private sector at to all, run. At all. The question that is coming to mind is, where does uh, the private-public partnership come to play? Especially when we're looking to not just importing mm. what we're going to use at the moment, but mm -hmm. importing uh, or having enough mm. for our people and having mm. enough to export. Do you think the government can do this alone? They can do it. The only thing is that they shy away from it. You know, in our own climate in South Africa, we have subjected government to just be a regulator of the economy. When we're in developed climates, government is not just a regulator. Government is an actor in an economy. It participates more than 70% in what happens. That's why in, in, the, in the US and the UK, five food, uh, price of food doesn't just skyrocket anyhow. Even though the government gives so, I mean, what they call subsidy to farmers and the rest of it, they also ensure that those subsidy translate to better economy for the people. Food storage is a big problem in Nigeria, whereby even though government has silos across the country, but how much of food are in those silos? Most of them really have maize in those silos. What about rice? What about flour? I mean, uh, flour. What about other commodity of food that we can take? The only time you see government saying they are going to their silos to go and remove food, they only remove maize. They only remove millet. What about other food items? So when I say government is supposed to be number one actor and not just regulator, in the sense that the farm input will be distributing wasteful, wastefully. If government that is managing it with the right managers of those farms, it will be more better. We share fertilizer, we share farm instruments, we train the people. At the end of the day, we are still having challenge that the food prices are not coming down. Although we don't want to mention other indicators that are also contributing to it. Cost of transportation, cost of storage, access to market and the rest of them. But how come government shy away from this particular area? If government have take charge, of the petroleum sector by ensuring that refinery works. Do anybody will be caring whether IPMA is alive or is dead? But because government is not taking advantage of that, the likes of IPMA who are not Shylock 
in the oil and gas sector will now be dictating and be telling us what we are going to pay for price of PMS and the rest of it. Now, we'll come back to the fuel scarcity and look mm. at what the papers are saying in mm. that regard. But in the meantime, let's also broaden our scope of coverage mm. to other newspapers this morning that headline the discussion as it concerns Nigeria's food security with a decision to give a five-month period with what is known as a free window that is import duty free and weaver free for the importation of certain food commodities. Now, our next set of papers that broaden the scope of this discussion are The Vanguard and The Punch. On the front page of The Vanguard, it also accompanies with the lead story and infographics depicting some of the food items that will come into question. On The Vanguard this morning, beneath the masthead, you'd find the story FG opts for duty free imports for rice beans wheat and other grains more of this story can be found on page five of the vanguard strap lines accompany that story read it will impact on inflation says nasima a step in the right direction says the cppe farmer action aids boss reacts now accompanying this story is also a similar report by the punch newspaper on the punch it says fg suspends food import duty Partner states on farming. Government launches five month duty free import window for maize, rice, wheat, others. FG to partner governors. Military to cultivate arable lands, support smallhold farmers. Now, what is interesting, mm -hmm. away from the inclusion of rice and beans, which mm -hmm. are all staple foods mm -hmm. in the Nigerian context. Mm -hmm is the sub-regional approach which the federal government is looking to partner states mm. Mm. and one thing of interest is the military is also mentioned here exactly uh, is this more on the situation of insurgency and banditry that reportedly has driven farmers out of their farmland definitely that can be put into perspective because we know the you know the military have been having farm settlement and farm uh, companies for themselves i knew the nigerian army have a big farm over 100 hectares of land around giving just opposite invest of abuja they have cattle ranch, they have farm settlement, they have built for them. So it's not just in Abuja, across the country. It's a good one. In Egypt, for instance, the military doesn't just sit down and wait for war to come before they are active. They participate in agri, they participate in housing, they participate in consortium, they participate in every segment of the economy that can boost not just the, the economy of the military, but also the national economy. So if the government is going to ensure that the military also participate in farming, in agriculture, it's a kudos to us. Because one, I don't think any bandits want to go and attack a, a military fa a farm setting because it will be well secure. Although we have had instances whereby they attack NDA compound, but I knew the military will be more more proactive when it comes to their own. Now, also engaging the military in the sense that they also go to help the government to be able not just to produce the food, but also help any logistic. Now, take advantage. I mean, look at the issue or that angle. The state governors. I know in the past, government have been, federal government have engaged the state governors in farming agricultural. But there's always this aspect of wastages and improper account of how much government have spent. For instance, there's a particular policy going on now. They call it AgriSA, Agricultural Semi Land, Agricultural for Climate se Climate Change Semi Land Production, whereby the federal government is releasing some money to the World Bank and state are also paying their counterpart to farm to buy equipment from selected local government across the country. It's a good one, but. We just hope that there will be transparency, there will be accountability on the part of the state governor because releasing the money from the federal government is not a challenge. The challenge is how does the state governor take that kind of action to ensure that that policy no, no, will not just help the state but will help the national. There is also the National Agricultural Land Development Agency, a government agency that will be in the forefront of estate, establishing farm estate across the country. I've asked in the last time we, we talked about agriculture on this program, I said, where is now that? National Agency for Land Development and Agricultural Development. Where are they in all these food issues that we have been talking about? So it's a good uh, uh, policy for the government partner with the military partner with the state governors to ensure that we have food sufficiency for national security. Because food sufficiency is to help us to have a better, I uh, mean, a better, robust national security. Because when there is challenge in food security, definitely there will be challenge in national security also. Now, a lot of Nigerians have faulted some policies of the current administrations mm. in its quest to ensure food security mm. now many have said that this might be time for us to open the doors to the conversations of genetically modified foods gmos mm. nigerians have been worried about the health implications mm -hmm. but it almost feels as though if 
we're talking about alternatives to a free import window mm -hmm. can we allow for conversations around gmos and having alternatives in our quest to food security the issue about gmo for someone like me have also made a discussion around it in the past is that the technology is not yet perfect and even the developed countries that engage in gmo are very very restrictive in each, in that kind of area because they have not yet perfected the technology so we financially going to bring it down to nigeria uh, I think we may have issues because the technology from the people who even initiated it, they have not perfected it. And if you also remember in the past, ECOWAS and AU have shied away from that particular initiative. That's why I see that in every activities of AU and ECOWAS, they don't want to go into that area because of the cost implication and human implication of genetic care. And again, and, and, and the, the result, which means that uh, some people have seen it to also have to do with uh, biological weapons. So they are trying as much as possible to avoid it. So for Nigeria, we know we have an agency, National Biological uh, Biotechnological Center, that have been working on GMO products and the rest of them. Even they also they have also confessed that it is not hundred percent to perfect, and we may not have the safeguard, particularly the, to, to safeguard our society from engaging in this when the repercussion comes. So that's why we have to be very very uh, limited in GMO. So for now, I won't ask any government to quickly go into that because. We still have a valuable lands to produce food for Nigeria. Just that the particular economic and political way for government is just still lacking. All right then. Well, it's an encompassing discussion this morning. Reminded that be reminded that you two are invited to join the conversation on our online platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and on X, where you can share your thoughts, comments, and opinion at ADBN underscore TV. Remember, it's an objective conversation. The invitation is to contribute towards nation building with solutions that help tackle or address some of the critical economic challenges currently bedeviling Nigeria. Now, more developments on the current administration's drive to ensuring food security and also to stabilize the economy through an advancement plan that would see two trillion naira injected over a six month period begins today with further infographics as published on the premium times is a picture of president bola metinibu with the catchphrase cost of living crisis let's take a look at it together well the picture does capture president bola metinibu with his fenced clench with a sign of hope and smile on his face that says tinibu approves massive duty-free importation for rice wheat beans others now you find a picture inserted next to that the current price for a 50 kg bag of rice mm. now i don't know if it's sarcastic in a way to have low price tagged on the 104,999 price tag for a 50 kg bag of rice mm. now it's in sharp contrast because hey. indeed it's a cost of living crisis our mm -hmm. purchasing mm -hmm. power parity is declining at a time mm. when there's call for a living wage exactly, exactly. How, how many persons can actually be able to say you're not going to have to buy every month but make a provision for a quarter. Exactly. As I, well, although I'm a little bit, uh, uh, I may not approve that price because uh, that price could be in a very high uh, sense. I mean, I very high, uh, high supermarket. Brand, supermarket because I know that the bag of rice is not up to that amount that they target. it. But we know that some imported rice are expensive, especially the one that we normally call it. If permit me to mention the name, Uncle Ben's. Those, uh, you know, those are very expensive, but not up to that level. But on the other hand, is a uh, government, uh, just like the premium term, has stopped, cut down import duties on windows for importation of food. And these are stable food, that we, as we pointed out earlier, that we can produce here in Nigeria. So, as I earlier pointed out, why is government doing this? They have their reason. One of the theory principles of economy is that when there is every supply, then price will crash. But I can tell you for free. That principle is failing and it has fueled in sub saharan africa there is no amount of every supply of anything you want to do in sub saharan africa that crash any prices in europe it could work but in sub saharan africa like nigeria supply anything to the market oversupply it to whatever level we have greedy shylock businessmen and traders in nigeria they are ready to maintain the status quo of that price. But, but many would argue that we have the FCCPC and exactly. it's been taking a drive to some markets to manage sharp practices. But FCC power is limited. I said it on this platform. There were, in 2018, 2019, when that Nigerian Consumer Protection Board was changed to FCCPC, there were about three clauses 
in, in, in is it sub, uh, subsection section 29 of that particular law that wanted to empower FCCPC not just to be following the supermarket up and down but to go to the manufacturer and ensure that they have a regulated price but that clauses were removed at the time they went for public hearing the power that MCC would have had by now is the same power uh, price control board in US and UK would have got uh, are, are enjoying but because of the kind of stakeholders that we have in the manufacturing sector and the trading sector in Nigeria they ensured that that particular section was totally erased out of that law and that's why they are, they are just see they can go to any market they cannot enforce it they can't enforce it because they don't have that power they don't have the power to prosecute they don't have the power to arrest they don't have the power to ensure that whoever they caught or whoever they arrest can be put like the way FC is working they don't have that power so if you go to the market you can, you can only persuade people then that please so reduce the price but what about the power that will ensure that you sanction individual group they don't have it well it's a very dicey conversation this morning while commendation pours in for the current administration's drive for a five-month period to give free importation duties for certain food commodities it's also with the need to also enforce regulations within the Nigerian formal and informal markets. Mm. Whilst the FCCPC is taking the initiative, there are more calls this morning from Mr. Defolari that they be given powers to operate much like we have in other climes across the world. But the other conversations greeting the frontline pages this morning are on the need to plan and budget properly. Now, in every nation's quest to achieve economic prosperity, the budget plays a key role. The Guardian newspaper this morning mirrors in the performance of the 2023 budget and the economic outlook in its lead story. And it has recorded that in a nine month period, some unfunded provisions have hit over a trillion naira in this regard. It also greets its front page with an infographics of the period in review. Let's pick up the Guardian this morning and look at that story together. The lead story has the catchphrase 2023 budget performance outlook on funded deficit hits 1 trillion naira in nine months, worsens FG's physical position. Now, it is also mirrored in setting indices. Mm. It is looking at the, pro the, the charts of debt servicing mm -hmm. between the year 2022 and 2023 mm -hmm. and the attendant growth that the economy recorded 37%. Mm -hmm. It is looking at recurrent e expenditure. And the growth incurred in that line as well. Mm -hmm. Capital expenditure, revenue, and a fiscal deficit mm -hmm. that is reading in the negative. Mm -hmm. The growth indices for our fiscal deficit is reading minus 1.33 trillion. Mm -hmm. That is a minus 23 corresponding indices. Exactly. Exactly. So what, what we need to understand about budgeting is that I mean, we don't have the time because it's not a budget class, but we can try as much as possible to educate our people. One of the key front line of budget is this. How much are you making? How much are you spending? We are spending more than what we are making. That's the summary of what the Guardian newspaper has said. Now, we are spending more than what we are making. So what are we spending on? And we are not making that money. We are spending on loan debt. We are spending on uh, rec uh, recurrent expenditure that talk about salaries, allowances. We are spending on frivolous activities that doesn't have the corresponding value for the economic growth. We are spending on things that we know at the end of the day, it will be like a wasted venture. So, if government spending doesn't arrowly, and when I mean arrow, have a focus on the economy, then the economy will be at a deficit as reported by the Guardian. But on the other side, where are we making money from? It is just two things, the oil and the tax. What are other things that government can make money from? Apart from oil and tax, government doesn't have any investment. All the 64 uh, uh, government owned enterprise how much are they bringing on the table how, uh, when we say even they are even commercialized what are they commercialized on what are the product you know when i was talking about government taking the forefront of farming see farming will give nigerian government trillions upon trillions upon trillions if they are the one at the forefront but they are not looking at it they are still looking at it from the perspective that uh, we will remain the policy maker we will just remain the regulator we will bring out a uh, Fertilizer, we distribute it. We bring out farm tools, we distribute it. Meanwhile, you have the opportunity to take advantage of being the forefront farmer yourself. Nothing stops government, Nigerian government, from having a farm company to produce wheat, maize, 
corner and the rest of them. Instead of giving these individuals that we come and import, import what? And then these few people will give you the excuses why their price will not come down because you have not done the necessary. Now, other aspect of this budget is it, when government is spending, do they spend on energy? Do they spend on road infrastructure? Okay, we can say they are spending on road infrastructure because there are a lot of abundant of road uh, uh, projects they are going. Last week, on all the national newspaper, Minister of Works was showing advert of advert of all the roads that the government wants to construct, which is good. But how how networking is doable to our farm settlement and to our areas of industrialization? Uh, that's true because mm. a lot of focus has been on trunk A roads, mm -hmm. yes. federal roads. What exactly. happens to the trunk C roads, particularly mm -hmm. in the local government areas? There's also the discussion on if we can have railway definitely to ease the definitely. cost of transporting these goods which is very very important so it, it's good that we have trunk a road that connect all the cities all the major town in terms of a uh, road network but what about the one that will facilitate the goods and services and food product because one thing that is lacking in those road network is that the one that will connect to the farm settlement is not there and the state governors are not ready to build any road for anybody even the federal road that we knew under the military they are all dilapidated nobody's ready to repair them so what should the government be doing? Just like Riley Pond, the rail is, rail is there. Rail 2 will be come on stream, but the rail will already be collecting, connecting to cities. There's no one that will connect to the rural areas. And there's something that Nigerian government practiced in the past. They call it uh, localization of industry. In our first development plan, second development to the development plan that we had, all these are indicated. But how many, since 1999, any government is interested in localization of industry whereby you can site industry in local areas? Because when we site or allow industry to be sited in local areas, then the way that we are building, the road we are building, it will be connected to those Even areas. proximity to raw yeah. material. Exactly. I know you said it's not a budget class, but I'm tempted mm. to ask. Mm. You've brilliantly highlighted the need for these issues. Mm. But the challenge remains on our revenue, even when we look at the infographics as published exactly. by The Guardian. Our revenue encompassing IGR as well. Mm -hmm. It's been over-reliant on oil. Exactly. Now, we're talking non-oil sectors Chester. as well. Many would always quickly point to agriculture. Mm -hmm. But even when you look at the distilled products from petroleum as we get it, mm -hmm. uh, the refinery in Nigeria would have catered largely for some of these products away from the dependence on oil and gas. Exactly. Which are also huge in the market. Mm. Take rubber, for instance. Definitely. The amount of plastics, in as much as we're trying to move towards a, a, a cleaner climate, we yeah. yeah. still are largely consumers of Exactly. Plastic. But as long as the government doesn't have that sensibility to say, okay, the petrochemical industry through that crude oil and the rest of them can help us to broaden our IGR, not just selling crude oil at $80, $90 and bringing receipt from NPC, but looking at how to also you know, distinct that crude oil and ensure that when it is refined locally, all that product that we can get from it can be used, petrochemical, fertilizer and the rest of them. It was just that good that opened people's eyes and say, oh, so they can produce uh, fertilizer from photochemical issue. By the time this same man will begin to produce uh, plastic and other, other materials from the particular So we can also bring this. But these are the initiatives that Nigerian government had many, many years ago. But because of lack of political will and economic understanding of how this work, they jeopardize it. And in 1986, that we now focus on finance houses. This is our building industry. We now started focusing on finance houses. That's when government lost impetus in how to ensure that the economy grew, particularly how to generate revenue. You may mention of uh, petroleum products. You know why many of us look at agriculture as one of the biggest in area to make more revenue? Because agriculture, just like petrochemical, also have subsector to minor sector to mini sector that you can generate revenue from. From agro product produce alone, several materials and products can be generated. Talk about leather, talk about uh, aftermath of uh, food, food processing from all these, some of these food materials. We can generate money from the board because government is not at the first one. It has left everything for the third party and the third party are not interested. They are looking for policy they can shortchange and accuse government of one or two things they say okay, let us import. Because one thing about Nigerian businessmen is this. They have been able to understand how to kick the government to a corner. And they will kick the government to a corner in a sense that they will let government know that although the policy of the government is not helping them to grow, at the same time government have to look at alternative. And what is the alternative? Let us import. 